But like, bro, do y'all think YNW Melly come getting out of jail though? I feel like he gonna make it. This is rappers who lyrics got them locked up. Oh damn, I forgot all about my nigga Take Cake. Ew, boy, boy, what do you want to know with action? What's some action? You get turned into peasants. Your boy see. Well, let's get to subtracting. Mm mm. Make a night without my compassion or something like that. There's a few rappers. I hope that crash out demons stay in prison. No offense. What the fuck? There's a few rappers who found themselves on the wrong side of the law, and it was all because of something they said in their lyrics. So let's begin with talking about Tay. Hey, bro, everybody, everybody be snitching in their songs, and this nigga Tay K, nigga, let me talk about yo fucking case. I was trying to do the race, like nigga, basically just self snitching. Hey, whose lyrics landed him a staggering 55 year sentence. On June 16th, 2017, Tay K released a song titled The Race that would change his life in a positive way, but also had a negative outcome. Bro, like, as only three days after recording it, like that nigga Tay K was actually like taking over, bro. I'm so dead ass. And then nigga that remix with 21 Savage. Put it in your mouth. I, I taste like, hold on, like, hey, that shit was dope. He was locked up and put behind bars. You see, Tay K decided to name the song The Race because he recorded it while being on the run from law enforcement. True. That was like three days before I got locked up when I recorded it. At the time, Tay K was just 17 years old. And being that he reportedly grew up as a very difficult child who did not want to go to school and barely saw his father, releasing this track was life changing bro. to the future star and could have possibly taken him down a path he used to dream of. Although he originally released the song on SoundCloud as an independent artist, the song would go on to be a smash success. As a charted and number I think I, I think I heard this song from D. I think D's the one that put me on. 44 on Billboard's Hot 100 and has been Don't remixed be by tons of artists such as Tyga, Lil Yachty, Fetty Wap, and many more. However, the song didn't really take off until Tay K was locked up in prison. With the lyrical That's how I found I'm not gonna lie, I found out because that nigga was getting sentenced. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's how I found out about this song. Content of the race being used as evidence to convict and him. To understand why, it's important to note that just one year before dropping the song, Tay K was involved in a home invasion in Mansfield, Texas, like that resulted dude, right? in the death of 21-year-old Ethan oh, Walker man. on July of 2016. Police are still searching for a 17-year-old murder suspect Damn. described as a violent fugitive. Law enforcement sources confirmed that Tamor Trevon yeah, McIntyre is a suspect in a murder case in Mansfield. Tay K ended up getting arrested, but since he was a juvenile, he was put under house arrest at his sister's house. I had got my apartment. Like I said, Ooh. we didn't have a lot of. That nigga sister look good. Hey, Miss Parker. Family like that and Kimbo. That was you get released. Juveniles. Get I thought it was like 2000. Like I thought it was like 2017. Get released. He got released to me. I had my apartment. I was 18. I was working. While on house arrest, TK expressed that he was having urges to escape on sites like Twitter. And soon, he would literally cut off his ankle monitor and fled to New Jersey, where he was then caught by U.S. Marshals. He began to gain popularity on the wait. So all that nigga had to do was just sit there and like wait. So wait. So you telling me this nigga TK? All he had to do was sit there on house arrest. That's it. No, no, he was involved in a case where like he killed somebody, so he was gonna go to jail already. Day of his arrest by strategically releasing his song The Race, where he had a few bars about beating the case and running from the police. I was trying to beat a case, but I ain't gonna beat the case, bitch. I did the race. Beat it up. Why not shorty face? Eli cracking fold like a bass. Do a meet, you know, go out my way. Mm -hmm. Do the dash, you know, go out the way. Hold on. Uh, rob a nigga's shoes, rob a nigga's face. <laughs> we don't see a hundred bands on my face or something like that. I forgot the words. To make matters worse, the music video featured Tay taunting the cops, toting guns, and posing in front of his own wanted poster, which was kind of audacious. <laughs> However, fans loved how authentic he was. This nigga was the original crash out and Cometazine. I'm not gonna lie. Bro, nah, Tay K and Cold Methazine are the original crash outs. I don't care what nobody say. Them niggas are the original crash outs. In his music, causing his follower base to explode. Look, as we watching this, this nigga for real, he's not playing. That's what, that's, that's what makes me. the song lit. Like, nigga, nigga, like, I'm listening to, hey, look, look, cause like, hey, you know how some niggas be, artists be like fake. Bro, my so nigga, nigga, my nigga, but I'm listening to him like, damn, this, hey, I'm listening like, damn, this nigga for real. <laughs> But these publicity stunts Yo, wouldn't age well, Z, as bro. after the investigation was over, TK was also found responsible for murdering a photographer who had invited him to take pictures while he was on his race. Although the capital murder charge and its mandatory- Just to take pictures and he murdered that nigga? For a 40-year prison sentence did not- A nigga just trying to get you a flick up, that nigga just trying to get you a little- 
pose, pose. Oh yeah, I like that pose. You know what I'm saying? Just a little flick. And they had to smoke him because of a pick. Stand up. Tay K was sentenced to 55 years behind bars on the 19th of July, 2019. It's assumed he's not having a good time behind bars as early last year, tweets from Tay K's official Twitter account said that he was being treated like a hamster and that he was at war within. While an argument can be made that Tay K certainly- And that nigga got caught with a phone in jail. I said it, nigga. I don't, I don't know if this nigga says it, but this nigga Tay K got caught with a phone in jail. So, that, so I think they added more sentences to that, I believe. I don't know. He deserves the punishment for for his crimes, the same cannot be said for Mac Phipps, who had nothing to regret since he was wrongfully convicted for over 20 years. McKinley Mac Phipps became a no, 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 yo, Jim Lee, this is a genuine question, bro. If you was wrongly convicted for 20 years, I'm what are y'all doing? I'm not gonna lie, what are y'all doing? I'm not, what are y'all doing? Me personally, bro. The state gotta pay me, gang. I'm not gonna lie. What what did it, what did the state pay that one nigga that they wrongly convicted for like 40 years or like something like plus? They paid that nigga millions. Hey, I need some money to my shit, gang. 20 years, them young nigga crash house got nothing on me after that. <laughs> I'm crashing. Member of No Limit Records in 1996, which consisted of Bro, legendary rappers convicted. like C Murder, Mystical, and Snoop Dogg. He was That's on his way to a very fruitful career until the 20th of February, 2000, where tragedy struck. Mac was at a show with his family in Baton Rouge when okay. suddenly a fight broke out in the crowd. And before anyone knew what was happening, a gunshot was released, okay. causing the crowd to panic and scatter. While everyone was running away, Mac supposedly took out his personal gun as a defense tactic as he went to search for his mom who was also at the show. But this would prove to be a grave mistake that would cost him 21 years of his life. The cops arrested Mac for murder and at the time, Yo! Yo, no, 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 yo, I'm crashing out, bro. Nigga, so you tell me I'm at my performance, I'm having a good old time. Niggas want to be crash out demons in the crowd. Guns start popping off. I take out my gun for, to protect myself. I'm looking for my mom to make sure my mom is still here on this earth and she's not the one that died. But I get arrested and I get convicted 20 years? Oh, I'm crashing. I'm crashing. Mac I'm crashing. didn't really understand what I'm he was crashing. being accused of. Start going to the house. And um, it wasn't but a couple minutes later, police had surrounded my, my, my whole house, man. They're coming from the backyard, from the front, they didn't block the streets off. And so when he got to the interrogation room, he told the detectives that he didn't even have a gun on him, which was a lie. Now, according to- Ah, why did you lie, you thug? Mac, he lied because he feared a concealed weapon charge and didn't even think about the possibility of being charged with murder. He assumed whoever was shot would wake up and tell them who shot him since the- Wait, he got shot? Of being charged with murder. He assumed whoever was shot would wake up and tell them who shot him since- Oh, this nigga got shot too. Oh yeah, I'm getting convicted. Wait, hold on, let me- yeah, hold on, being not charged tripping. with murder. He assumed whoever was shot would wake up and tell them who shot him since the person who got shot was only hit in the arm. However, oh. his world turned upside down okay, when cops mind. informed him that the young man had passed away. As it turns out, the bullet it, had gone like, through his arm and into his chest. This made it seem like Mac was trying to cover up the murder since multiple people clearly saw he pulled out a gun. However, the cops still strongly believed that Mac was responsible even after he fessed up and showed them his gun with all the bullets accounted for. That Damn. gun that you had had not been fired. Never been fired. So what the fuck are they fucking with you for? Because I gave them this gun. They tested it. They tested my hands. The gunpowder test came up missing. Like we couldn't. Oh they, yeah? Yeah. They, they oh suddenly, man, don't you just love it? They Damn. couldn't remember what a gunpowder test was. When his case hit the courts, it got so, so much worse for Matt. As thug. the district attorney That's at the it. time, Walter Ain't Reed, black. was That's notorious it. for convicting black folks with no mercy. But what's kind of strange is that the prosecutor spliced together lyrics from two different songs off Mac's catalog as evidence of Mac's criminal character. During the trial, the prosecutor said, this defendant who did this is the same defendant whose message is murder, murder, kill, kill. You fuck with me, you get a bullet in your brain. You don't have to be a genius to figure out that one plus one equals two, to which Mac thought was messed up. You took two different songs, I mean... them together to make what you feel. To... Oh, that nigga took two different songs and put them together. Nah, that, nah, that cop is evil. Oh to basically God, make the statement evil. you wanted to make. <laughs> One song was murder, murder, kill, kill, which was like, no, 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's a crazy ass song, gang. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I might be on the cops. I'm, I might be on the cops side of this one, gang. That's a crazy ass song, bro. That's a crazy. To, to basically make the statement you wanted to make. That's a crazy ass song. One song was murder, murder, kill, kill, which was like a, a straight battle rap. The other one was a song called Shell Shock. And the line that they referred to was actually a line about my father. The prosecutors also presented Mac Yo, as a villain good. because of his rap moniker, so The Camouflage guy, Assassin, which in reality had nothing to do with the literal murder. It seemed like they were trying to replicate the same strategy used against Mac's fellow No Limit rapper, Snoop Dogg, some years prior, albeit much more aggressively since they greatly lacked evidence. Okay. The case really began to raise eyebrows when the real killer came forward. The guy who came forward came forward 10 days after my arrest. He came okay. forward on his own, just really feeling guilt because a person that he considered his nephew was sitting in jail for something that he, he pulled up. He pulled, you know, that, that happened with him, yeah. you know? And he told him what happened, and they basically told him that they got who they wanted. They just let him wow. At the time the jury was to come so to a decision, wait, the this prosecutors had all- bro, like, oh my God, no, 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 I'm crashing. I'm crashing. Pretty succeeded in painting Mac as a cold blooded killer, causing him to get a 30 year sentence in 2001. Mac Phipps has since served Yo, 21 I'm years crashing, before being bro. granted clemency in 2021, meaning he would still be on parole for nine years after that. Just like our next rapper, Bobby Shmurda, who was. About a week ago, a week ago. Oh, man, I made it week, tweak it up, tweak it up. When nobody that nigga get the squeeze it up, squeeze it up. Everybody catch it, bully yo, bully yo. Nigga got me on my bully yo, bully yo. I'm a running go dumb out of <laughs> like Also oh. on parole after accidentally bro, telling on himself. Bobby Smart is hey, Come on, bro. That nigga Bobby Smart is nice, nigga. Yeah, yeah, he nice with it. He Just like our next rapper, Bobby Schmurda, who is also on parole and after Bobby accidentally Smurda telling on yeah. himself in one of his biggest songs. <laughs> yeah. Bobby Schmurda was the hottest thing in hip hop in 2014. Oh, his first music video, Hot. Hot, was nigga. Even got white people saying, nigga. Especially that, what's, what was that one girl that was, uh, what was that one girl that, like, that was trying to sing the lyrics, but all she said was, nigga. Going viral with multiple celebrities co-signing his iconic shmoney dance. That's an old song. It's not, <laughs> can't everybody stop saying that? It's not just caught a body by the week ago. It's Mitch caught a body by the week. Oh. He was even performing at concerts with some of the biggest names in rap, such as Drake and Meek right? Mill. But sadly, Bobby wouldn't get to enjoy his newfound fame for a very long time, a as a year-long police speak. investigation right, was about to come to a head, head, with Bobby at the center of it all. You see, Bobby was a member of the And Bobby ain't snitched on his groups. Don't forget to leave that part. He ain't snitch. S9 crew, he and had been in the streets up. from a very young age. School outside, really, I stopped going to school around, around like fifth grade, sixth grade, and then. Hold on, they, you, they you went in the fifth grade? Yeah, I stopped going to school around fifth grade. Okay, you already knew all you needed to know. You sharing <laughs> and all that, <laughs> and, and great. Making coloring. And, and I used to go to school and I used to look at the other kids sometimes. <laughs> you stupid ass <laughs> trying to learn <laughs> and shit. GS9 was a gang that notorious. Nigga called me stupid for trying to learn? Notoriously made most of their money from selling crack, <laughs> and we all know what comes with the drug business. With a few deals gone bad, the cops had zoned in on the GS9 Crips and were waiting for the perfect moment to scoop them up, oh, which is where Bobby came up. in. Only a few months after dropping hot, Bobby and GS9 got raided by the police while at a studio session in New York. All 15 members of the crew were arrested and put behind Damn. bars. In the courts, Bobby was painted as the driving force behind all the crimes and set his bail so high that he couldn't afford it. In reality, Damn. Bobby wasn't the figurehead in all of is. The police just didn't like the fact that Bobby had gotten popular while rapping about crimes. They saw his music as a taunt, which is why they moved in on their entire crew. In the song Hot, <laughs> Bobby Wait, made multiple- So that nigga Bobby was still moving like this? I thought that nigga Bobby was moving crazy when he got out of jail, but that nigga was still moving like this before he went to jail? Music as a taunt, which is why they moved in on their entire crew. In the song Hot, <laughs> Bobby made multiple references to crimes they actually committed, such as the lyric where he says, like I talked to Shice when I shot dudes. Bobby was literally- Rev, I got you, nigga. This is a YouTube video, nigga. I got you after claiming to have shot people and even named two men who were proven to be involved in the crime with the lyrics i'm with trigger i'm with rasha i'm with a rod broad daylight we're gonna let them things bark his friends rasha and a rod who are letting them think bark ended up with somewhere free and tell my new smart tv bitch got up about a week ago we gonna go 
Oh, I just I just said it. A nigga said Mitch. 98 and 53 year sentences respectfully. And Mitch, who caught a body about a week ago, got handed eight months since they lacked a lot of evidence in his own case. He only got eight After months. seeing some of his boys get cooked by the judge, <laughs> Bobby ended up accepting a plea deal for a seven year sentence. It was supposed to be five, but he took a longer sentence so his homies Rowdy Rebel and Nitch could do seven years instead of 12. Rowdy was also a rapper in the GS9 crew and has been friends with- We just need more rappers should be like Bobby, nigga. I'm not gonna lie. Be like Bobby. If you wanna live that street life, nigga, you better ride or die with your homies. Bobby since he was a little kid. Me personally, I'm snitching. That's it. I don't live that street life, so nigga. Hey, anything to anything to like get my sentence lesser, nigga. If I'm not a part of actually you know what? F that. If I'm a part of the criminal, like if I'm a part of the crime, I'll take my time. But if I'm not, and like niggas is trying to put me in this, oh I'm snitching. I don't give a fuck. It. So it wasn't surprising that Bobby would do all this for him and Nitch. Bobby has since served his time and was released in February of 2021. My and his actions really earned him a lot of respect in the streets <laughs> since he held it down <laughs> for his boys. Up, Unlike Takashi69, who did the complete opposite and is now literally getting blackballed by the entire industry. The rapper 69 had hired the members of the Nine Trey bro. Bloods as his bodyguards right after they released his breakout hit Gummo in 2017. Right off the gate. I don't care what nobody say, bro. This nigga Takashi69 had it on lock. Did I still listen to this nigga after he got out of prison? Yes. Now, do I listen to him now? No. The top blood saw this as an opportunity <laughs> to make a lot of money from an up and coming rapper. So they gave 6ix9ine a high position within the gang, convincing him to believe he was one of them. <laughs> This led to internal conflicts with lower members, seeing 6ix9ine as inferior, causing them to kidnap and rob him in July of 2018. Don't forget, have sex with his baby mama. Don't forget that. This is what you get for trying to like, you know what I'm saying, play gangsta, bro. Get in, get in. That nigga wasn't get in jumped in. in. That's what I'm doing. He didn't put in no work. Get the fuck in. All that nigga need was brought back money. 6 9 reported the incident to his manager, Shoddy. Nah, I don't blame him for snitching then. That's what I'm saying, nigga. I don't blame him for snitching. I only ate. I literally told this. Be I literally said this before again. The situation, like they was put, they put guns in his face. They robbed him, and they had sex with his baby mama, nigga. I'm snitching. I wasn't too happy that fellow Bloods were trying to mess up his bag. You see, the Bloods in charge of managing Six Nine had actually been snaking him massively on shows. Like I'm talking massive amounts. He's not going to the show. Why are you not going to the show? It's 60000 Like, my rate, everybody know my rate is 100 k and over. That's mm -hmm. like, uh, no, we actually gave you way more than that. They call me and say, are you crazy? We just put the 80000 front end in. Deposit, so it was one sixty. Okay. So I'm like, hold on, what? How many shows you got? He said, y'all got most of the shows on this thing. I said, all right, how much? He said, we got you for like a couple dates. You just signed um, to $3.6 million. I said, Damn. what? He said, yeah, you just um did these couple of dates, but we we didn't lowball you. It's 3.6 million. For the 15 dates. For 15 dates. I said, so it's not 300,000? This had been going on for a long time Damn. without his knowledge. And this caused 6 9 to cut all ties with the 9 Trey Bloods publicly. I fired everybody in my team. I got no manager, I got no booking agent, no PR, no public. I don't got nobody on my team. It's just me. I want everybody to know if you booking shows, do not book shows unless I say this show is going to be booked with this person. They will steal your money. They're not me. I'm not signing no fucking Damn. contracts. That don't got nothing I'm to snitching. do with me. Whoever okay. is booking I'm shows snitching. for Takashi 6 9 is stealing your fucking money. The Bloods weren't going to take this sitting down since they were actually real gangsters. They had planned to quote unquote super duper violate 6 9 You trying to do, you trying to live, you trying to separate the show. That's cool, but now you got to get violated. Yeah, super yeah. violated. I mean, they did violate that nigga in the um in that workout place. I forgot Planet Fitness, right? Super, super duper. So, or somebody ain't too did. much he can really do unless he go run around with a hundred all securities all day. You know what I'm saying? Super he gonna get shot to It's the guy on the phone, did he? <laughs> That's a fact. Woo! 
Ooh, I'm a savage or whatever that clip was. That's a fact. Hey, he just canceled all his shows. He ain't a gang member no more. Nah, he ain't nothing. Luckily for 6 9 the feds had been monitoring the Bloods for a long time, and 6 9s antics made it even easier. That's why when they discovered a murder was about to happen, they found and arrested all members of the gang, hitting them with RICO charges, which have a 93% conviction rate. 6 9 himself was facing a minimum of a 47-year sentence since he was technically a part of the organization and had involvement in some of the drug crimes. But 6 9 didn't feel a sense of belonging to the group anymore, especially after they had been robbing him blind. So when things got slightly inconvenient, he flipped without any hesitation. So you well, things did you know what I'm saying like do. the more uh, like the more like I, it's like I was like I was part of the niggas that was like yo I don't fuck with six nine because he's this. I was part of the media niggas, but then when I actually took the time to like actually know about this niggas case, oh nigga, I'm snitching too. A lot of you know violent crimes, um, robberies, assaults. Uh, Drugs, such of that nature. Mr. Hernandez, do you recognize anyone in the courtroom who was a member of Nine Trey when you were a member? Yes. It was said that he met with and the I'm feds 26 times throughout his cooperation to provide information to them. And that's when his breakout song Gummo was dissected in court. Mr. Hernandez, I'm going to ask you some questions about the lyrics of Gummo. Are they still hunting him? I don't think so. That nigga, um. He switched to me, um, he switched to like um I don't know what the word is, but like Dominican music or they're like whatever you call it. Uh, but I don't think they're still hunting him though. But I know like he's banned in certain parts though. Like if he comes back to New York, they did say like if he try to come back to New York, like they're gonna try to kill him or something, bro. But other than like are they going out their way to like try to find him and kill him? Nah. Ricky is another one back there. And then the second line, there's the phrase in the middle, drum, it holds fifty. What is that in reference? Uh, drum is an attachment that you had to uh, carry the, um, extra clips and They also reference his lyrics dissing Trippy Red's friend. Yo, KP, you will lose the nigga. I'm okay, that Uzi nigga. nigga. Remember when you were in LA, nigga? Wait. And Yo, KB told you to people. take your flag off the nigga that you was talking about in the song. Let's no, KB, the you the loser. People. That nigga don't run shit. He's not from my state. The Damn. prosecutors brought it up when they were discussing the assault of Trippy Red's team by the Nine Trey Bloods. Six Nine's testimony landed all the Bloods involved hefty sentences. It was even worse for the two guys who kidnapped him since they refused the plea deal offered by the prosecutors. Damn. Eventually, Six Nine ended up receiving only a two year sentence, which he has now served. And his actions brought him a lot of hate from everyone because they felt like he snitched on the homies. Six Nine, on the other hand, seems to see it differently. I beef with the I whole West Coast. Too. I beef with the Houston. I beef with Chicago. I beef. Did I ever get kidnapped by Chicago or Texas or or West Coast? Did I ever get kidnapped by them or I got kidnapped by my own people? What I did was not snitching. By your own people is kind of insane. I mean, they. I mean. You did get shoot at high rank, like you didn't get jumped in technically, so like, you, man. What I did was being smart. In the aftermath, Takashi 6 9 deciding to let the truth fly against the gang got him shunned by the hip hop community. He claims that platforms like Apple Music and Spotify no longer promote his music whenever it drops. Tons of artists aren't willing to work with him anymore, most likely for the fact that doing so can be damaging to their reputation. As was the case with someone like Kodak Black, who got heavily criticized for working with 6 9 last year. Good, However, he seemingly only did it for the check. That's an L, my man. It's like, it's this is this what I be trying to tell people, bro. Like, nigga, if you can easily get a million dollars just by doing a song, and fuck what happened with his personal life, bro. You're there for the music. Like, you're there to just work on music. F with the personal life, bro. What the fuck, bro, man? I understand the value of a dollar. On the other hand, when Gunna allegedly snitched on his best friend, label boss, and frequent collaborator, Young Thug, things unfolded a bit differently. And this is also a case where lyrics were reportedly being used as evidence as well. On May 9th, 2022, Young Thug, Gunna, and 26 Young. other members of YSL, <laughs> aka Young Stoner Life, were named in an indictment for allegedly violating the RICO Act which basically meant they were allegedly committing crimes in a criminal organization. Gunna specifically was locked up for the lines and- And then they gonna lost mad weight to inside too, I'm not gonna lie. 
song with a now deceased rapper named Lil Keed, where he repped YSL and showed a YSL pendant in the video, which the prosecutors claimed was enough to prove his affiliation. However, things made a weird turn when six months later, it was reported that Gunna took the out for plea deal to get out earlier than the rest of the members. This essentially means he snitched on Young Thug. To make matters worse, the footage of him snitching in court even got recorded and posted online for everyone to see. I became affiliated with YSL around 2016. Is that true as it pertains to you, Mr. Kitchens? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> YSL is a music label and a game, and you have personal knowledge that members or associates of YSL have committed crimes in furtherance of the game. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you were present when law enforcement officers stopped the vehicle and But like, he disagrees, so like how's that like take along with Jeffrey Williams? Hydrocodone. Plus, you you can't even lie in the court though. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? You can't lie in the court. Methamphetamines and a firearm. It's missing, but you can't lie. These items did not belong to you. Yes, ma'am. Instead of getting treated like Takashi, Gunna somehow maintained a solid fan base Saying and connections yes to the industry, sure. as the hip hop community was drawn between whether the Alford plea should be considered a form of snitching. As for Thugga, I mean, the prosecutors the have yet to present any <laughs> solid evidence, leading them to turn towards Thug's music as evidence of criminal activity. I want you to YSL so I don't want to answer a song of yes? on okay, YouTube yeah, okay, sure. titled Slime Shit, where the lyrics state, hey, this is that slime shit, hey, YSL shit. Hey, killing 12 shit. Hey, <laughs> fuck a jail shit. Hey, cooking Bro, white bread. Man, this nigga read it is so funny. I'm not new to this. Hey. The lyrics the judge read are from Young Thug's 2017 song, Slime Shit, featuring. I gotta listen to that. I gotta listen to that. Yeah, got After it. This, After this, the whole conversation around rap lyrics being used in court erupted, with Young Thug's parent label stepping in and setting up a petition against the use <laughs> of rap lyrics in court. My name is Ken Alas. It's no secret that people of color are under attack every day. Bless up, we need to protect freedom of speech, especially when it comes to art. My art is not a reflection of my character. I have something to actually like You should be able to always express the way you feel in that moment. Freedom of speech and expression is important to me because I think of you know, all the beautiful music that everybody's ever put out. However, Young Thug's lyrics are still being played in court, even as recently as a few months ago. <laughs> The trial for Young Thug is still ongoing, and only time will tell if he'll actually beat the case. Like I really don't, I really don't know what else that nigga saying. I ain't watching this video, bro. Free Young Thug. 